Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel once again. So recently I got sent this Solvo 3D laser engraver and pen plotter. And now I've never used one of these before, so I'm excited to check this out and see how this works. But let's go ahead and get this unboxed, let's get this set up, and let's test it out. So here's all the pieces that it comes with. It does come with a nice instruction manual to show me how to put this together. But I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up. I mean, as you can see, you got the laser, glasses for your eye protection, power cords, power adapters, the pen holder over here, the writing board, and the X and Y axis to get set up. So let's put this all together and we'll be right back. All right, so I got this all put together. So the next step is I do need to install the software for it to get this operating and running. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and get that all installed and get a file set up. And I'll show you guys that once I get that set up, but it's gonna take a minute, so I'll come back. All right, everybody, so I got Lightburn 1.0.04 installed. So that's what I'm gonna be using for this test. So let's first, let's go ahead and just create a file. Let's click somewhere and let's just do Art by Adrock. If I can spell. There we go. And we'll just shrink this down a little bit. Let's say, let's just go yeah, right about there. And we'll move this right around, maybe, let's go 60 to 80. And so there we go. That's what we're going to be outlining. So now if we go up and click on right up here, go, and we can set it to there, and that's where we'll place our piece. So we'll click go, and we'll have it move over. We'll go into cut layers, and I'm gonna keep the speed 1000, and the max power is gonna be 60%. Error assist, I can just turn that off. That's not really necessary. And as you can see here, it is a line. We can fill it in. We can fill plus line, offset fill. I'm just gonna do a basic line for this test first on this piece of wood, and we're gonna see how this cuts it out. So once we got that, we'll click OK, and then we'll go over and we'll hit Start, and we'll see how this prints. All right, so that has finished, so let's take a look. And as you can see, that came out really, really good. I'm quite pleased with how that turned out, actually, based on those settings. Now, I could have sent it up the power a little bit higher, but you wouldn't get such clean, crisp lines. It would, it would just get burned more, and that's not what I was going for. So I left it a little bit lower, and the speed I didn't crank up too high. I left it at 1,000 millimeters per second. So let's go ahead and let's run another test on, let's just try a piece of cardboard and we'll see how that comes out. So here's just a piece of cardboard that I have laying around and I just tore this off the box that it came in. So it's a little bit thicker, so I'm going to adjust the knob on top just to raise it up just a little bit more. Because as you can see, this is just a little bit thinner than the cardboard. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and do this dog that I imported. And this is just a picture I found online, but for this, I'm gonna to have to go ahead and right click and trace image. That'll get me the vectors for it and I can change the threshold if I want and make it a little different. I'm just gonna keep it the same from what it was at. It was 128, I think. So we'll just go ahead and click okay. And I got everything set back up again. So I'm gonna keep the same exact settings. And as you can see over in cuts, layers, I do have this image, we just won't show that. There we go. And we'll do this one 
We'll do this one as a line as well. And maybe on the next one, I'll do the, a fill so you can see what the difference is and how it comes out. But let's go ahead and we'll start this one and let's see how this one turns out first. All right, let's take a look at this. Now that came out great, even on cardboard. So yeah, that's, that's powerful. Like, it's not bad at all, but I'm gonna do that one more time. Same image, I'm just gonna do a fill on it this time. So it'll fill in the whole thing and let's see how that works. Okay, so that didn't work. Um, I guess I had the power settings entirely too high and it caught on fire. So I had to take it out back and put it out. And as you can see, it left a nice big burn in my tablecloth and it melted this plastic cloth that I have over it. But oh well, no big deal, trial and error. So I would recommend if you're doing a whole fill, you should probably turn down the power and probably increase the speed a little bit. That way the laser doesn't stay in one spot and catch it on fire like I did. So don't do that. But let's go try some other things. All right, so we're gonna run another test, but this time we'll do it on a piece of glass. So I'll run the dog again and see if we can etch it into this. So let's go get that set up and give it a whirl. Okay, so here we are back over in Lightburn. And for this, I did scale up the dog to make it a little bit bigger. You can see that now it's 83.14 millimeters by 75.487. So that's the size we're gonna use. I did set this as line mold and the power I have set at 100 and the speed I'm gonna do 100 millimeters per minute and we're just going to go and test that and, and see how that works. I've, I've never tried this, so I'm not really sure how it's going to come out, but I got to start somewhere. So let's give this a shot. All right, so this has finished. Let's take a look at it. As you can see, that came out really well. So yeah, it works just fine on a piece of glass. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and run one more test on this piece of wood. And for this, we're gonna do a grayscale image and I'll put like a newsprint on it kind of picture. So let's go ahead and get that set up and then we'll print that and see how that turns out. Okay, so here we are back in Lightburn. And so for this one, I just chose this image online from Ready Player One, and I converted it to grayscale. And so for this, let's go ahead and we can adjust the image. And I have this set at negative 13 for the contrast, the brightness at negative seven and the gamma at 0.6. And you can adjust these to what you think would look better but I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it at that. Negative 13, so we're just gonna go ahead and print that and see how that comes out. And as far as the settings go, we're gonna run this at 3000 millimeters per minute and a max power of 35. I don't want this to burn too deep where you just won't see the image. And I also don't want it to burn too light where you really doesn't do anything. So we're just gonna set it at that and see how it goes. And yeah, you can see here, it has newsprint on. I could also set it to Dither, Stucky, Jarvis, Grayscale Sketch, but I'm just gonna do the newsprint just because, why not? So yeah, all right, let's go get this set up and get this cutting and see how it looks.
right, so that has finished, and let's take a look at it. And overall, it came out okay. It's not the best. I probably could have adjusted the settings a little bit more just to make it maybe maybe a little darker, or I could have ran another pass on it or just up the power a little bit. But overall, the image came out, and I'm quite happy with it. Okay, so let's go over a few things. Now, if you just want to do some line engraving like this, this came out really, really well. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. And based on the settings, I could have made that a little bit darker, but I'm happy with it. It's, you can barely feel it. It's not very deep at all. So I like how that looks and how it came out. If you wanted to do a newsprint or a grayscale image, also not the greatest looking, but by adjusting some settings and, and changing a few things, I could probably make that much better. Now, if you're doing wood or if you're doing cardboard, don't do that. That's okay, but this I completely destroyed because I set the power entirely too high and I caught it on fire. So if you're doing cardboard or paper, make sure to probably put a piece of metal underneath it just in case it decides to burn right through. Just a heads up, but the dog came out just fine. And now I'm getting ashes all over the place. Now, if you wanted to do glass, yes, you can. And as you can see, I haven't wiped it down, so there's still some glass particles on there. So I would recommend taking some water and just wiping that away so you don't end up cutting yourself on some little pieces. But yes, you can engrave on glass. Now it does come with the clipboard if you wanted to use this pen tool. I haven't hooked it up because I really haven't had a need to even use it. So I'm not gonna go over that at all, but based on how this works, I can't imagine this being any different. It's definitely a nice feature to have, but I just really have no intention on using it anytime soon. So, Yes, this machine works great. It's a five watt power laser. It works really well. It engraves, it burns clearly, as you can see over there, and it could carve a whole lot of different things. So whether you're doing softwood, hardwood, you will have to adjust the settings based on your needs and it's more or less trial and error. Not everything's gonna come out right the first time, but if you test something out and it doesn't come out, well, Adjust the settings a little, but I would recommend using scratch wood or, or whatever it is that you're engraving and do a test run first, just to make sure your settings are correct on what you're looking for. So overall, is this machine any good? Absolutely. I like this machine. I'm very happy with it and I can't wait to keep using it on future projects, especially maybe some, some metal I'll be doing down the road, anodizing it and then engraving into it as well, which it's capable of, but just the metal itself, it cannot engrave. This uh, this laser is just not quite powerful enough to cut through the metal or to engrave it, whether it's even aluminum, copper, brass, zinc, it, it just can't handle it. So I would have to coat it in a spray paint first or anodize it or something like that just to be able to, to engrave into it. But that'll be down the road in the future. But if you guys are looking for a machine like this, it's simple to use, it's easy to set up. There was really only a few few screws I had to put together. So it didn't take very long at all. The directions were clear for the most part. They probably could have been a little bit better. But as you can see, the pictures weren't really straightforward. So when I had to put this together, these nuts right here were already on top of there and they weren't like in a separate package. And I didn't even realize that until I'm like, how am I supposed to put this together? But once I unscrewed those, it popped right on, screwed them back on, and we were set. So if you get stuck at that part putting this together, it's probably because those nuts are already pre-installed on here and you just have to take them off. But other than that, no big deal. All the software came on the flash drive that's supplied. So that was just fine. I'll leave a link down in the description on where you can pick this up at if you're looking to get one for you. But again, guys, if you liked this video, hit that subscribe button down below, ring the bell, get notified of all the new videos that come out each week. And as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.